Greetings pilgrims to episode 33 of the Polygon Pilgrimage. Today I've got a neat little trick for you guys about combining normal maps. So we're going to be using my example here of the house project once again. The molding for the trim here is going along very nicely. And as you can see I already have a normal map applied with these nice swirly designs. And we got some designs down here. But what it's really missing is this is supposed to be wood. So what we really want to do is add a wood grain to this as well. So let's jump over to Photoshop and I'm going to show you how we can accomplish this. Alright, so here we are in Photoshop and as you can see here's our current normal map. But these are supposed to be wood. So I have here a wood detail normal map that we'd like to add to this. And what you would think starting off is that, hey, if I just take this and throw an overlay on it and then maybe affect the opacity a little bit, you'll get a pretty decent result. And you will visually, but programmatically and uh, texturally it's not working right. Uh, normal maps are based on channels so this operation here putting the overlay actually destroys the channels information. So we're not going to do this, we're going to do it a different way which is much better and will give us the exact result that we're looking for. Okay, So let's go ahead and get started. Okay so step one we're going to go ahead and create a new folder underneath our current folder here of normal. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that in there and of course bring it up to the top so we can see it and work with it. And I'm going to call this extra detail. Alright, so I'm going to drag the wood detail into that folder and I'm going to make an additional copy of it. There you go, or control J if you're learning the shortcut keys like I am. Now these two copies are going to affect all three channels, the red, green, and blue, of our extra detail normal map and then be applied to our current normal map in a harmonious way. Alright, so to do this we need to set up two different colors that we're going to be using. So over here in our color palette, we're going to actually leave the first one at white, but set your background color to a 50% gray. So I'm going to change this to zero, change this to 50, and there you go. Now, now that we have our two colors, I'm going to select the first of our two layers, which is actually this one because we made this a copy, and I'm going to open my channels, which is open here because Photoshop likes me. There we go. I'm going to click on the red channel, hold shift and click on the green channel to select them both because I want to edit both of them. So at the top here, edit, fill, and by default it'll be on foreground color, which is our white for this one, so that's perfect. I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to select the copied layer that we made, this one here, and go back into the channels and select just the blue layer. I'm going to flip my color to the other color we chose and say edit, fill, which now that it's the foreground color, again I leave this alone and say OK and fill that. Now if I turn back on all the channels here and hide that for a second, if we select the white layer, the white-ish looking layer here, our first copy, our first copy is going to be set to multiply. Let's go ahead and choose that. There we are. And our grayish looking copy, I'm going to set that to overlay. Now, you'll see that this looks kind of like what we had to begin with, but except now, programmatically, it's working correctly. So I went ahead and collapsed this, and I'm going to change my opacity down to around 12%. I find that works well for this particular instance and I'm happy with the way it looks on my texture here and on the model ultimately. See, so now I have the best of both worlds. I have my original detail with the spirally pattern that I designed and now I have this wood grain in kind of a subtled way across because, you know, molding is not real wood most of the time but it has that wood-like effect. So this is really great and I've got one more trick for you I'm going to tell you real quick is if I select every piece of my normal map here, all of these, I'm going to do Control and E, which collapses it all down into a single layer. I'm going to select all and hit Control C to copy. Now, holding Control, Alt, and Z, I'm going to press it once, twice, and I just undid all of that. Well, you're thinking, well, what's the point, right? Now I can actually hide all of my layers that deal with my normal map, and with the normal folder selected, I'm going to hit Control and V. And now I have my normal map back, normal map back, and what it is is this is a condensed copy of everything that we've just done. So this is a real nice easy way to say, 
normal map. And this will be my current normal map. So all of my raw files are here embedded, but all that we see at the top is a single file. This is especially helpful for if you have any kind of a program that only accepts a single file and is not able to, to uh, read from a PSD file like I'm doing here and read multiple layers and choose that collapse all. If it's not that sophisticated, I just always keep this in my normal map structure. And you can always hide it and unhide everything else if you really want to. But for those simpler pieces of software, I use this trick so that I can give them exactly what they want. One flat file, complete and done. And this is kind of a snapshot of where you are currently in your normal map process. So let's jump out back in the Max and we'll take a look at how this looks. All right, so I've gone ahead and loaded in our new normal map. And before we re-render, I'm just gonna zoom in here on the current texture and show you what it looks like. There we are. So you can see some of the wood detail here that's from the diffuse map, not from the normal map. So let's go ahead and re-render now and we'll see how this looks. Here it comes. And I'll zoom in a bit. And we can see now some of these bumps and ridges are actually being driven by the normal map. You can see it really clearly across the current details. So now it actually looks like these details were pressed out of a piece of wood. So I'll jump around here a little bit while it's rendering as you can see. And yeah, we're looking pretty good here. I'm pretty satisfied with this. This will look especially nice once we have some dynamic lighting moving across it and let the normal map really shine and do its, do its job. So there you go guys, this was our trick for today, which is uh, how to combine normal maps. This is a great way if you have a surface where you know you want to add some subtle, uh, a noisy like pattern to something, you can create that noisy pattern separately and create the normal map for it and then reuse it on multiple surfaces in multiple models. So once again, keep practicing guys, get better, enjoy this and you know use this in your models and uh, please enjoy the quote at the bottom of the page. And I will see you all next time as the pilgrimage continues.